Hey there, this is Brittany from Just Be Crafty. If you're new here, welcome, and if not, thank you so much for coming back. In today's episode, we're going to be making this modern fall farmhouse tea towel. The inspiration for this project came from Chip and Joanna Gaines' Hearth and Hand home line at Target. Whenever I'm in Target, I always want everything that's in their line. I love her combination of cream and denim and wanted to make something that would go along with the beautiful items from their line. To me, farmhouse style just screams fall. I can picture this tea towel sitting on my counter while I'm baking a fragrant apple pie or heating up some apple cider. This tea towel would make for a great housewarming or holiday gift. Trust me, if you make up a bunch of these for your own kitchen, all of your guests are going to want them too. Be sure to bookmark this video so you can come back to it during the holiday season. You can find all the materials I'm using in today's video in the description box below. And as always, I'll have links to the written pattern in the video's description box. You can view the free version of the pattern on my blog, and I'll also have a link to the printable PDF version which can be purchased in my shop. You'll want to follow along with the written instructions as you watch the video tutorial to help guide you through the project. So now with all that out of the way, let's go ahead and get started. For this project, we're going to be using Lily Sugar and Cream Cotton Yarn. It's 100% cotton and one of my absolute favorites. For our main color, we're going to be using the color Ecru. And as a contrasting color, we're going to be using Blue Jeans. A 5.5 millimeter hook, as well as scissors and a yarn needle. With our main color, we're going to start with a slip knot. Slide the slip knot onto your hook and pull tight. We're going to begin by chaining three. Okay, so one, two, and three. We're now ready to begin row one. So to begin row one, we're going to make a single crochet and a half double crochet into the third chain from our hook. So go into that chain, make a single crochet, and now we're going to make a half double crochet into that same stitch. So yarn over, insert your hook into that same chain, draw up a loop, yarn over, and pull through all three loops on your hook. This completes row one. Now we're ready to turn our work and begin row two. We're going to start by chaining two. We're gonna make one single crochet into the first stitch. So into that first stitch, we're gonna make a single crochet, and now we're going to chain one, Gonna chain one and we're gonna skip that next stitch and we're going to work into the top of the turning chain from the previous row. So we're gonna make a single crochet and a half double crochet into that top of that turning chain from the previous row and that completes row two. We're now ready to turn our work and begin row three. So we begin with a chain two and we're gonna make a single crochet into that first stitch. We're gonna chain one, and now we're gonna make a single crochet into that first chain one space. So you might have to use your hands to kind of find that space. So we're putting that single crochet into that chain one space. Okay. Now we're going to chain one, and we're gonna make a single crochet and a half double crochet into the top of the turning chain from the previous row. So we're going right into there, and we're making a single crochet and a half double crochet into that same chain. Now we can turn our work. We're gonna chain two, and we can start row four. So we're really just gonna be doing more of the same. So we're gonna single crochet into the, into the first stitch. We're gonna chain one, and we're gonna single crochet into the first chain one space. 
So use your hands to find that space. Make a single crochet. Okay, we're gonna chain one and we're gonna put, we're gonna skip that next stitch and we're gonna put a single crochet into the next chain one space. We're gonna chain one and we're gonna make a single crochet and a half double crochet into the top of the turning chain from the previous row. So find that chain and make your single crochet and half double crochet into that same chain. And really that's it. We're just gonna keep repeating this for, for quite a while. So we're turning our work, we're gonna start our next row, we're gonna start with a chain two, make a single crochet in the first stitch, okay, chain one, find that next chain one space, we're skipping that, we're skipping a stitch, and we're going into the chain one space, Make a single crochet, chain one, we're skipping a stitch, we're going into the next chain one space. Use your hands to find it if you have a hard time. Make a single crochet into that chain one space, chain one, skip the next stitch, find the next chain one space, make a single crochet, chain one, and we're gonna put a single crochet and a half double crochet into the top of the turning chain from the previous row. So find that chain. And we're making a single crochet and a half double crochet into that same chain. All right, so let's do it, let's do it again. We're gonna chain two. Single crochet into the first stitch, chain one, find the first chain one space, single crochet, chain one, find the next chain one space, single crochet, chain one, find the next single find the next chain one space, single crochet, chain one, find the next chain one space, single crochet. All right, we're at the end of the row again. We're gonna chain one and we're gonna make a single crochet and a half double crochet into the top of the turning chain from the previous row. Okay, we're gonna turn our work and we're ready to do the next row. So start with your chain two. And it's just more of the same. We're making a single crochet into that first stitch. Chain one, single crochet into the next chain one space. Chain one, single crochet into the next chain one space. Chain one, single crochet into the next chain one space. Chain one, single crochet into the next chain one space. Chain one, single crochet into the next chain one space. Chain one, we're at the end of the row and we're gonna make a single crochet and half double crochet into the same chain. So as you can see, we're developing a triangle because we're working this from corner to corner. So you're going to wanna keep working back and forth in rows just like this until your two angled sides measure to be about 12 inches. So if you'd like, pause here and meet back up with me once your sides measure to be about 12 inches. Okay, so my sides are about 12 inches now and I'm just finishing up my last row. So I just have a single crochet in my last chain one space. I'm gonna chain one and then I'm putting my single crochet and half double crochet into that top of that turning chain from the previous row. All 
Okay, perfect. So this 12 inches, this is going to be the width of our tea towel. So we're going to start decreasing one side, which will actually keep it. So we're going to start decreasing one side and we're going to increase another. So this is where we're going to start making the rectangular shape. If we would have continued in this manner and then started decreasing both sides, it would have made a square. But to make a rectangle, we're going to be decreasing on one side as we increase in the other. So we're going to start this side with a decrease. So we're starting by chaining two. And we're going to make a single crochet into the first chain space. Okay. And now the rest of the row is going to be the same. That's really the only difference that we're going to be doing. And don't worry, this is not going to be confusing at all. As you can see, uh, it already started that one edge. So you'll be able to completely tell which, which side you're on uh, by looking at the shape of your tea towel. So you'll see what I mean. So we're just going to continue the, the rest of this row as we normally would. So we're single crocheting into the chain one spaces followed by a chain one and single crocheting into the next chain space. So go ahead and keep working across this row and we're gonna finish it out just like we have been working in the previous rows. Okay, so I'm almost at the end of the row. All right, I just did my last single crochet in the chain one space and then I chained one and now I'm making a single crochet and half double crochet into the chain from the previous row. So we're done with that row and now we're going to turn our work. And just like always, we're gonna start with a chain two and we're still gonna single crochet into that first stitch. Oh, it was a little bit loose, so I'm gonna redo it. Okay, so we're gonna chain one and now we're gonna single crochet into the next chain one space. We're just working how we normally would. The only difference is going to be at the end of this row. So we're just, we're single crocheting into the chain one spaces followed by a chain one and we're just working across the row. I'm almost at the end of the row and we're just gonna keep working until we reach our single crochet into the last chain one space of the row. And this could be a little bit hard to see, so be patient and go a little bit slow. Okay, so, all right, I'm gonna go back. Okay, all right, so this is going to be my last chain one space of the row. So we're gonna make a single crochet And now we're not gonna chain one, we're gonna leave it as is. We're gonna make a half double crochet into the top of the turning chain from the previous row. Okay, so we're just gonna make one half double crochet into that top of that turning chain. And we're not chaining one after that last half, half after that last single crochet either. So that's it. So now we're ready to start the next row and we're on a decrease side. So we're just gonna chain two and we're gonna find our first chain one space, and we're gonna make a single crochet into that space. Okay, so chain one, single crochet into the next chain one space, and now for the rest of this row, we're just gonna be working in that same fashion. Uh, so we're just gonna be making our single crochets into the chain one spaces, and we're gonna end this row with an increase. So as you can see, you're gonna start getting that straight edge. So the one side is going to be staying at about 12 inches while the other side is going to be growing. So you'll really see that more as we do more rows, but um, it's really exciting to start seeing our tea towels coming together. So we're just gonna keep working across this row if you'd like, pause here and meet back up with me once you get to the end of the row. Okay, so I'm almost at the end of the row and this edge is an increase edge. So we're just continuing working. I've just done my last single crochet. We're chaining one and we're making a single crochet 
and half double crochet into the top of the turning chain from the previous row. And now we're going to turn our work. And we're going to still, this is the increase side, so we're making our increase. So we're doing a chain two. And we're going to single crochet into the first stitch, chain one. And then we're going to single crochet into the first chain one space, chain one, single crochet into the next chain one space, chain one. We're going to just keep repeating this process until we make a single crochet into the last chain one space of the row. We're almost to the end of the row. I'm chaining one, making a single crochet, chain one, and then this is my last chain one space of the row, so I'm making a single crochet. And I'm going to make a half double crochet into the top of the turning chain from the previous row. So we're just making a half double crochet into that chain. Okay, so now we're ready to turn our work. And we're just going to keep working in this fashion. And you can really see that edge uh, leveling off. So the one side is not getting any bigger while the other side is getting longer. So once again, we're starting with a chain two. We're going to single crochet into the first chain one space of the row. We're going to chain one and then single crochet into the next chain one space. Chain one. And we're just going to keep working this until we get to the end of the row, until we get to the last chain one space. We're going to make a single crochet and then chain one. And then we're going to make our single crochet and half double crochet into the top of the turning chain from the previous row. So this is all we're doing. We're going to keep working back and forth in rows just like this until our long side has reached 19 inches. So if you'd like, pause here and meet back up with me once your long end has measured to be about 19 inches. All right, so my long side is about 19 inches at this point, and now I'm ready to start leveling off the top. So we're gonna start decreasing on both sides now. So now if this is going, we're gonna start working to end or, you know, finish off our triangle. So I worked all the way almost to the end and we're going to work, we're going to start working our decreases on this row. And it doesn't matter which side of your work you're on. Uh, this fabric is reversible. So we're just working up until we've made a single crochet into the last chain one space of this row. So I just have a few more stitches left. And this really isn't anything new. This is what we've, this is really, this is what we've been doing on the one side. So I have, this is my last uh, chain one space of the round. I just made a single crochet. And so now we're gonna half double crochet into the top of the turning chain from the previous row. And this is all you're going to be doing for the remainder of the project. So we're just going to be working decreases on both sides as we go. And as you work those decreases, you're going to be closing in on your rectangle. So if you'd like, pause here and meet back up with me once you have only one chain space remaining in the last row you completed. Okay, so I've worked back and forth in rows. Only one chain one space remains. We're gonna start this row with a chain two and we're gonna make a single crochet into that last chain one space, the last and only chain one space. And now we're gonna make a half double crochet into the top of the turning chain from the previous row. Okay. So that completes that row. So we're gonna turn our work. And now we're just gonna chain one and we're gonna make a half double crochet into the top of the turning chain from the previous row. And that's it. Uh, we've just completed the body of our tea towel. This is what it should look like.
And now we can cut our yarn and we can start on our border. To secure it after I cut the yarn, I like to take my tail and pull it through the loop on my hook twice to do basically two foundation chains and then I just pull it tight to knot it. Okay, so we're gonna start on our border and I like to start in a fresh corner. So find a corner, just find a corner that doesn't have a tail attached to it and put your hook in it uh, when you get there. But as you can see, if you look at the edge of your work, you're going to see that there are little holes or little sep like natural separations into um into your work and those are the little holes that we're going to be working our border into for at least this first round so go ahead insert your hook into any corner and we're going to start with a slip knot with our main color slide that knot onto your hook and pull tight and pull through the corner okay so we're going to start by chaining five. So in this corner, we're gonna chain five. And we're gonna make a single crochet into that same corner space. Okay. Next, we're gonna chain three. And we're going to be working, like I said, we're going to be working into those natural spaces that you see every so often. So we're going to chain three. And you're going to find your first little kind of opening and you're going to go in there. And we're going to single crochet and then we're going to chain three and we're going to find the next little natural space and we're going to make a single crochet in there. Chain three. Make a single crochet into the next space. You might have to use your hands to find the space. Chain three. Single crochet into the next space. Chain three. And single crochet into the next space. Keep repeating this process until you reach the next corner. All right, so we're almost at the end of this row. We're chaining three, we're single crocheting into the next little space. Chain three. Okay, it looks like we have one more space before we get to the corner. So I went into that space with a single crochet and now we're gonna chain three and we're at the corner. So once you find that corner space, you're gonna make a single crochet and you're gonna chain five. And then make another single crochet into that same space. And now we're ready to kind of flip our work and we're gonna continue working down this side. So we're just gonna do the same thing. We're gonna chain three. We're gonna find the next natural space and we're gonna make a single crochet. Gonna chain three, find the next natural space and single crochet. We're just going to keep working in this fashion until we make it all the way back around to where we started. If you'd like, pause here and meet back up with me once you make it back all the way back around to the beginning. All right, I'm almost back around to the beginning again. I'm doing a chain three, and this is my last single crochet. And I'm almost to the corner, so I'm going to chain three. And I'm just going to join with the first chain of the round using a slip stitch. Okay, so now we can cut our yarn. 
and secure. So I like to take my tail and then pull it through the loop on my hook twice. And then I just pull it to tighten that knot. Okay, so now we're going to grab our contrasting color and we're going to do our finishing touches on the border. Grab your contrast color and we're just gonna slip our hook into any corner and we're gonna make a slip knot with our contrasting color. Slide the slip knot onto your hook and pull tight. So we're gonna start with a chain one. And so working into that corner space, we're going to make two single crochets. So one and two. And now we're gonna chain three. And then we're gonna make two more single crochets into that same corner space. Okay, so now we're going to work into our next chain space. We're gonna make a single crochet. And I'm working over my tails as I go. We're making a single crochet, followed by a chain three, and then another single crochet into that same chain space. Okay, so now we're gonna go into our next chain space and we're gonna make a single crochet, chain three, and a single crochet into the same chain space. And that's it for the border. So we're just gonna keep repeating this process all the way around until we get back around to the beginning. And we're creating this really pretty edging detail on our tea towel. So the little chain threes are making these little scalloped pico edges that I love and I think goes really, really good with this project. It really is a nod to the farmhouse style and a really pretty piece for your kitchen for fall. And we're just going to keep working in the same fashion. We'll do the next corner together. So if you'd like, pause here and meet back up with me once you get to your next corner. All right, so we're at our next corner and we're gonna work it just like we did our first. So we're gonna go into that corner space and we're gonna work two single crochets. So there's our first one and now our second one. And then we're gonna chain three and make two more single crochets into that same corner space. And there's your next corner. So that's it. So just keep repeating this process until you get all the way back around to the beginning. If you like, pause here and meet back up with me once you get uh, back around to the beginning again. All right, so I'm almost to the beginning. I just have one more chain space to work. I'm doing my single crochet followed by a chain three and another single crochet. And we're going to finish off by making a slip stitch into the first stitch of the round. Okay, so now we'll just cut our yarn and we're gonna secure. So pull the tail through your loop twice and pull tight. All right, now we can flip back over to the back and we can start weaving in our ends. So like I said before, it doesn't really matter which side is the front or the back. I just picked one side to leave my tails in, but now we can work to weave our uh, tails in. So what I like to do, I like to kind of find a straight path for my tails to go down. So I usually go, I find one straight path that I kind of work and insert my hook into. And we're doing this as inconspicuously as possible. So we're just catching some stitches and I like to work down about an inch or so. And then I just work back and forth on top of the same spot with my tails. So this is all that I do. So as you can see, I'm just working back and forth along the same spot. And I don't care if I split my stitches or make it messy, that actually helps your tail to stay, um, to stay woven in for much longer. That's all I do. So if you'd like, you can pause here and you're just gonna work uh, back and forth and on your tails until you've sufficiently weaved them in and then you can clip your tail ends. And I think that looks good. So I'm gonna go ahead and clip my tail and I'm just gonna repeat that for all my remaining tails. 
If you notice that your shaping of your tea towel is a little bit wonky, go ahead and block it. Even if it's not, blocking it is going to give it this wonderful professional look. So what I like to do, I like to flatten it out and um, make sure that all of my edges are lined up really nice and really straight and I pin it in place and then I'm just going to take a spray bottle of water and dampen the entire thing. Um, I got this spray bottle from the dollar store. I made a whole tutorial, or not tutorial, but I made a whole video um, on a Dollar Tree knit and crochet haul. So if you haven't seen that, make sure you check that out. Um, there's a lot of uh, interesting things you can pick up from the dollar store, believe it or not. So I went ahead and sprayed that. I'm just going to let that air dry. And when we're done, uh, I'm going to have a really, really nice tea towel. All right, so there you have it. That is the fall farmhouse tea towel. I really hope you found this tutorial helpful. If you did, please let me know by giving the video a thumbs up. And if you haven't already and would like to, make sure you subscribe so you never miss a new tutorial or podcast episode. Thank you so much for watching. Bye.